Acquaint English Murder, produced and written by Jamie Marsh. Starring Robert Berry and Zane Ali. Dear Andrew, there's been a murder and the village seems to think I am still able to help. I will do the best I can. Mrs. Potts forced my hand a bit at the party. I couldn't say no. Detective Matthew seems nice enough, if not a little naive. I hope this is a good idea for me. It's been such a long time since I've done this. I will act like I know what I'm doing. That should work. It's the village fate now. God help me. Coffee? I just drink tea. So, shouldn't we be looking at the murder scene? I said I would be at this fate. This village should come first if we want them to cooperate. He's a professor. Good shot. Well, they have to teach you something in the army. Throwing was always one of my specialties. So, Brambley, any ideas who did it? How could I have possibly worked it out yet? I'm good, but not that good. Attention, everyone. Oh, here he comes, the new village leader, the vicar. Time for the raffle. As everyone is probably aware, Lord Potts will not be able to make the announcements at our fete. His lovely wife is here to say a few words about the tragedy that has occurred. Thank you, vicar. My husband, Lord Kenneth Potts, was a respected man, a man of the community, a community he kept very close to his heart. He adored it here in this village with all these lovely people. Kenneth would have loved to have seen all of your smiley, happy faces today. So let's keep smiling. Thank you for your kind words. Now, to welcome upon stage to draw the raffle this year, our very own real detective, Randolph Brandley. Now, now, calm down, it's only me. So, is it true you are working with the police on this investigation? I'm just helping out a little. But right now, let's just do the raffle. Mm -hmm. You must be excited to get your teeth back into your old career and do the Lord's work of bringing justice to this family at this time. It's like putting on an old pair of socks. Ever the mystery. So... The first ticket, then. What number will be picked? Brambley chooses the first ticket. Number 22. I have 22! That's mine! Congratulations, Audrey. You have won a meat voucher from the Gates Butcher Shop. But don't eat it all at once. We've seen you at the pub Sunday Roast. So, next ticket. Now, Audrey, I've lived in this village for a long time, but I've never asked. Grand. Thank you, Miss Nevin. How long have you worked for the pots? Oh, it must be coming up to oh, 20 years. I was brought in when um, Mrs Potts became pregnant with Annabelle, but I've been in the village since I was evacuated here. So you know this house very well? Certainly. But may I add, what's happened to Kenneth is unspeakable. Kenneth? Of course. No, I, I shouldn't call him that while working. It's just, I've been here so long. They're like my family. The birthday grub, including the cake, was organised by yourself as a surprise. Should have been a surprise, but in the end, even Lord Potts knew. If you don't mind me asking... Being a lass of your wise age, have you never tied the knot? Never found the time. I've focused on helping this family bring up Annabelle. You're very close. Her parents are busy people, always entertaining important guests. Sometimes they struggle to find time to show how much she means to them. 
Her dyspraxia, which she shares with her uncle, means she's always been a little closer to him. Mrs Potts has never really had the time to help with all that at school, you see. Talking of which, I must take up Mrs Potts' tea. Will that be all, Detective? Just one last thing. You're probably wondering why we have questioned you first. It was a worry of mine. Maids and cleaners tend to get around a household more unnoticed than others. I just wanted to ask if you had heard anyone or know of anything that might be of help to us. It would be indecent to gossip. I would just like to remind you that this is a murder investigation. All information must be put forward to the police. I did hear something rather unexpected and definitely private. Lord Potts has been courting with Miss Cryer. Last night I heard Lord Potts inform his wife that he was to leave the household, but not to be with either her or Miss Cryer. And what time did you hear this? It must have been about 6.30 as that is when I went to retrieve more plates from the outhouse. What are your thoughts? Personally, I was a little upset, but not enough to kill the man, if that's what you mean. In that case, let's have a natter with Mrs Potts. We'll meet her in the lounge. Certainly. Interesting, that, isn't it? What is? You didn't see? You have a lot to learn, boy. As I hear, the whole thing happened like this. Lord Potts was seated at the head of the table to await what should have been a surprise cake. All party goers were in this room except some kitchen staff and myself. At the head of the table stood Mrs Potts, Annabel Potts, Miss Niven, Daniel Potts, Miss Cryer, Reverend Green, Professor Jobbins and Mr Price. All with the same opportunity to stab the man in the side of the neck. The weapon was not left in the victim. It was reported to be a small curved blade. Precisely. The lights were switched off and the room was in total darkness except for the candles on the cake. It was brought from the kitchen and placed down on the table. You've forgotten about the vase that got knocked over and smashed on the way by the people carrying the cake. Oh, I haven't forgotten. I just wanted to see if that coffee did any good at waking you up. However, talking of the vase, I think I've noticed something. What's that? A cheese knife. Or well, you could call it a small curved blade. It's clean. The killer must have wiped it and dropped it here. Or maybe they put it in the vase and then it got smashed revealing it to us. Good idea. However, the vase was smashed before the stabbing. Oh yeah. But why would they leave it here? Wouldn't you take it away with you and wait for us to notice the missing cheese knife from the table? How's the investigation going? Good timing. We just have a few questions. Of course. Meet me in my husband's study. I'll get Miss Niven to bring you some tea. Don't trouble yourself, love. We already had a couple with her just now. Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll see you both shortly then. That last seemed a little worried a cleaner may have nutted, don't you think? Ah. Let's go find out. Take a seat. I think it would be best if you also took a seat. We have some news that might come as something of a shock to you. I've noticed that's your husband's chair. You were respectably nervous about sitting in it. You choose this room, though. It's up to you how quickly you feel like replacing him. Nothing will surprise me, especially if it's about my husband's affair. You know. I was informed yesterday afternoon by Professor Jobbins. When Kenneth was at that council meeting... Interesting in you just before the murder. Randolph, how long have you known me? How many times have we had you over for drinks? You can't really think I could be the killer. Unfortunately, we must suspect all those with a motive. And yours is a strong one. Honestly, that's unbelievable. I asked you to find the killer, not waste your time finding out about my private affairs. I was with that man for 30 years. I loved him. I've seen many people kill for much smaller motives than love. 
A black light gives off harmless, highly energetic ultraviolet light that is invisible to humans. Certain fluorescent substances absorb ultraviolet light and re-emit it at a different wavelength, making the light visible and the material appear to glow. As you can see here, some of you have very white teeth. <laughs> so just make sure you finish the questions I gave you last lesson for next week. Annabelle, a word if you would. Are you sure you're all right with returning to class? You can have the day off if you need it. And what? Sit at home with Mum? I would rather be here with you. You've got to be more careful, especially at college. I'll see you later. Enter! See you later. Miss Potts? Randolph. Is Annabel in your class? Yes, we were just discussing if she wanted a day off after what happened. Uh, what would you like, Detective? We just wanted to ask a few questions. Ask away. Right. So the thing is, we've been told that you chatted away to Mrs Potts about an affair between Lord Potts and his sister-in-law, Miss Cryer. Is she telling Porkies? Regretfully, it's true. How did he know? That's where it gets complicated for me, you see. By that, I take it you mean damaging for your reputation. You think you can see right through people, don't you, Brambley? How long... Have you been having an affair with your student, Annabel Potts? Well, I would say the clues are pretty much slapping us around the face. Don't you, Detective? Yeah, sure. Open your eyes. You can't see for looking. <clears throat> I think you're very much mistaken. Am I mistaken in seeing her hand reach for yours at the party when I entered? Am I mistaken by the knowing look you shared when everyone congregated in the conservatory? And am I mistaken by the note she just left on your desk, signed with a kiss? That's private. It's relevant to our case if it involves how you found out about Lord Potts' affair. Could we keep it down? The truth of the matter is, I was being blackmailed by Potts about my own affair. Blackmailed? Didn't he have enough money? You would think so, but he could be a sadistic bastard when he wanted to be. He found out I was seeing someone, but not that it was Annabelle. Ah, so you decided you would find out something about him to stop the blackmailing? Yes, it wasn't too hard. We all have our flaws. But why did he tell Mrs Potts? Wouldn't that risk him exposing you? Good question. Thank you. It's unknown, but I came clean to my wife last week, so I actually went to plead with Kenneth to do the same. Clearly. He didn't. So you decided to take the matter into your own hands. Well, I, I just felt as though it was unfair to keep this from Alison. We would like to speak to your wife, if we can. That won't be possible, I'm afraid. She isn't around at the moment. She went to stay with her sister after the news. You say you told your wife before the murder, but how can we take your word? when you lied to us before. I think it is unjust to speculate on matters you cannot prove. The fact of the matter is, I love Annabelle. That professor I do believe. This family, this village is twisted in love like a tangled rope. We must untangle these people, Matthews, if we want to find the truth. Matthews, you don't have any relation to any other officers, do you? Yeah. My father is a chief. So, you followed in his footsteps, like? More pushed me. But you reckon this case will impress him? I do hope so. He's not an easy person to make happy. What father is, eh? <laughs> hey, don't look so worried. We're not all miserable bastards. You're young. The job hasn't cracked your spirits yet. You're a dad, then. Oh, blimey, is that the time? I have to meet up with a friend. Oh. Don't worry, I'm sure you can find something to do. Vicar, how are you doing? 
another beautiful day of our Lord. Are you christened? Yeah, my mother insisted before she died, but I've not practiced much in life. Mm. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. What do you mean? It's Psalm 82, 3. I believe the village is behind you, Anne Bramberley. There is something I feel as though I should tell you. Yes? Lord Potts' daughter and Professor Jobin's. We are aware. Uh, are you aware of their engagement? No, we weren't. How can this stand, Bovril? It's just gravy. Have it on a Sunday lunch, but not to drink. Still better than your monkey tea. Every time. Why do I bother come to see you? I always thought for a little bit of friendly advice. So if you want to hear it from me this time, you're doing the right thing. Help in this family. I sometimes feel as though I may just be getting in the way. Like, I'm not who I was once. I'm trying to get back to it, but it just feels like a performance of myself from yonks ago. Ah, then you don't need me to tell you. You have to find out who you are now. I thought about going to the corner shop today. I hope it's not stupid to say it scared me. I haven't had that thought in a while. The stress you see, it's getting to me. These people act proper and polite, but I can see them for what they truly are. Hiding, scared from showing feelings and using that to hurt others around them slowly and quietly. The thing is, I'm not sure if it's getting to me a bit too. I don't want to go back to like I was before I retired, lost and alone. I'm more than happy to co-sign. Your mother never needs to know. She never understands me. Not her or father. They have only done what they think is best for you. I don't care. I just wanted a father who was around. But now that's never going to happen. You still have your mother, dear. You know you and Uncle Daniel have been there more for me than they have been. Detective. Sorry to intrude. I went to find Annabelle at the house and Mrs Potts informed me she would probably be here. So I've walked across this entire muddy field to your home to have a quick word. Isn't it a bit odd to have your house on the Potts land? The house came as part of the job. That way I was never too far away when Annabelle was a baby. That does make perfect sense. Now, would you like to come in? Yes, thank you. Don't worry. Audrey knows everything you will find out about me. In that case, I wanted to ask about your engagement with Professor Jobbins. What about it? How long for? Engaged? Only a month. It was wonderful till... you know. Why keep it a secret from your parents? This is a big thing for them. Not that I put up any fuss, but it was more Peter's idea. He's rather close to my father, so he thought this may upset him. How long have they known each other? They served together in the army before he got married. Would have been Malaysia 66, I think. Do you not now regret not getting his blessing while he was still around? Can everyone stop guessing how I feel about my father? We all have to remember she still is only 19. A little young to be marrying Jobbins, don't you think? We can disagree all we like, but I've known Annabelle all her life. She definitely loves that man. Miss Cryer, stop packing your bags. We have told you. You must stay while we're investigating. I'm not staying in this dump any longer. Maybe my sister can cope with living in the middle of nowhere, but I'm somebody, you know? I understand. I've already told you I have a really important audition. My agent says I've got to go. My tax will be here any time now. Even if I had an important haircut in Spain next week, I couldn't go if I was part of a murder investigation. Will you stop packing? And let me ask you a few questions. That's better. Everyone is calm now, like. I will try and put this as delicately as I can, but we have recently been chatting about a close connection between yourself and Lord Potts. A very close connection. If you get me. How do you know? I couldn't say. Where is she? Is that Alice? What is it with this family? 
Please calm down, Mrs. Potts. Just tell me where she is. Are you okay? Just get back to your pint. I think Alice is in a little distress. She's probably just in her room. Here, have a drink. What's all this about, Alison? I can go up and knock for her if you want. No need. I'm here. There she is. Yes, thank you. You bitch! Mum, there you are. We saw you rush off in the car. What was it? This is all your fault. You've always wanted to take whatever I've had ever since we were children. I could keep a brave face and stay civil while you slept with my husband, but when it comes to my money, I've little tolerance. None of this would have happened if you'd kept your legs shut. Yes, I slept with him, but I did nothing with your money. Well, look at this. Hey, up. Give it here. What is it? Mr Price will know. It's a letter from him. Ah, the thing is, recently, Kenneth asked me for advice on some solicitors in order to change his will. Where's that drink? He never told me this. I don't think he told anyone. Did he change it? Yes. I sent the last signature off on the day of his party. What changed? I don't think I'm meant to say. Brembley, what does the letter say? That seems even more private, I shouldn't... But if it's a concern of the family, I should, should know, know what my brother has said. You need oh. to tell us. Go on, tell us. My arms! Mother! Her arms! Oh. Oh. Stiff as rocks! Pass me a drink. Bitter. What's wrong? Strychnine. I need your strongest drink, now. It's not going to be pleasant, love, but I need you to down this. Everyone stay back. Does he know what he's doing? If we don't get the poison out, our airways will close up. Now drink up. That's it. Bring it all up. You should be all right now, love. Thank you, Brambley. That was a close one. Lucky. Strychnine poison is a nasty way to go. Any one of our suspects had the chance again to put it in her drink. Poor Alison. In just a few days, she's been poisoned, lost her husband, found out about an affair, and after it all, there's been left nothing in the will. Annabelle is getting the lot. The house, the money, the investments. A little is going to his brother Daniel. But still, can you believe the man? Right again, Sue. Your loving father, Randolph Brambley. You've been listening to A Quaint English Murder. Produced and written by Jamie Marsh. Brambley... Robert Berry Detective Matthews Zane Ali Lord Potts Kiff Van Brooklyn Mrs Potts Paula Hawkins Annabelle Potts Anna Locke Miss Niven Helen Minassian Daniel Potts Toby Roberts Professor Jobbins James Band Reverend Green Phil Wallace Miss Cryer Scarlet Bobby Mr. Price, Martin Lovell, Rebecca Small, Madden McQueen, Lettuce, Maggie Morgan, Brendan, Daniel Summers, Catty, Gail Taplin, Nikki, Nicole Knott, Neil, Glenn Hanna, Gary, Luke Foster, Bridget, Marie Watson, Nurse, Samantha Inman, Police Officer, Joanna Anfer. Bin Man, Simon Flynn Forensics Officer, Damien Zondergaard Taxi Driver, Tony Packman Music, Kevin MacLeod For more information, visit marshsite.wixsite.com slash acquaintinglishmurder Thank you.